All right, we are live. Welcome to a, a little random live stream today. Uh, the stars aligned. I, I have eight different boxes right next to me here, and I'd like to I'd like to share with you guys the unboxing. Also, my latest purchase, which I am wearing today. Uh, Watchdog podcast is here. Timothy's here. Blue shirt Buddha. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm I'm excited. I mean, new watch day is always just such a fun day. And um, with that, with that being said, let me show you what I got. I just bought this today from my local watchmaker. Um, it was a consignment piece that he he had in his store. And let me pull it up in front of, excuse me, the camera in the desk view. I bought a titanium Panerai Luminor. This is the Betterini case. It's 44 millimeters. It's crafted out of titanium. And this is a base model, meaning... And this is almost as simple as it gets. And it's it's so awesome. It's exactly what I was looking for. I, I have to tweak a couple of things here. Um, I love the sandwich dial and it is a little bit dirty. Sorry, guys. I probably should have cleaned this up before I threw it in front of the camera. But we've got the classic sandwich dial. We've got the awesome loom. We have just hours and minutes, no seconds no minute indexing. This is timekeeping at its base here. It, it, that's why this is called the base. And then of course we have the crown protector. Um, it, it's on this kind of nasty, ugly leather strap. It, it's a, it's an official Panerai strap with the titanium deployant. And you guys can see this does carry the, this is pre in-house days. This is the heavily modified um, pocket watch movement. So I will go into specifics when I do the full review, but I was hoping to get ETA. I was hoping to get an open back. I was hoping to get a base model with either a sandwich or a sausage dial. I'm not the biggest fan of the of the printed um, dials that that um, are being produced these days. But you guys can see there's some nice ARC on this sapphire crystal. Doesn't eliminate all reflections, but you do get that bluish kind of reflection and sheen and certain lights. Uh, that's dope is here says, Hey, Bruce, Timothy's here. I, I know I shouted you out in the beginning. Wilson is here. Random Rob sick. Good pickup. Uh, good to see you guys. Hassan is here. Kevin is here. Thanks guys for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. I've got some fun stuff to, to share with you all. Brian is here. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in guys. So yeah, this is my latest purchase. It's titanium. It's lightweight. Awesome loom basic. Uh, it's running perfectly. I, I had my, or I asked my watchmaker to throw it on the time grapher. Zero beat error, super strong amplitude running minus two seconds per day. So um, yeah, here's a good, here's a good comment from Dariush116. Nice find. When's the tutor happening? Well, I'm pushing the tutor back. Let me tell you why. And I texted my AD this morning, my friend, John, I'm I'm sassy, man. I, I do not want to wait a month. It was over a month ago when I asked him, hey, can you get me a Tudor Royal? And he said, yes, I can. Let me talk to my rep. Let me see what's in stock. He said the black dial two-tone is out 14 weeks, but the silver dial and the champagne dial were in stock. And I said, okay, well, could you get one by Christmas? And he says, I don't know. We'll see. Let me order it for you. Uh, I was expecting it, you know, three weeks ago. <laughs> so I don't want to wait on a tutor. And I don't know. I don't mind waiting on a Rolex. I guess that sounds snobbish, but I don't want to wait for a two-tone tutor that nobody's going to like but me. My wife doesn't even like that watch. So I texted him today and said, sorry, I'm going to I'm going to be lame and, and I'm tired of waiting. He's like, no problem. I totally understand. And I showed him the Panerai. He's like, dude, that's sick. Uh, so anyways, I'm not sure when I'm going to get a Royal I'm not buying one right now because I don't want to wait, but that's the story on that. Um, David says, Bruce, how's it going? I have a dilemma. I have the Black Bay 41 and I love it, but I can't help but wonder if the Black Bay 36 would be better proportioned for a daily wear. I have a seven inch wrist. Well, I think it's going to look nicer, right? Uh, I mean, the Black Bay 41, it's fairly big when it's not the diver. When you don't have the bezel, it looks bigger than it is. I find it really comfortable, but I have a little bit larger wrist than you, David, uh, 7.25. So I enjoyed both the ETA diver and the Black Bay 41, the non-diver that you're referencing here. 
Um, if I was going to buy for me, I'd buy the 41, but you're at seven. I think you could go either way. Maybe you could try one on at an authorized dealer, kind of see what you think there. <laughs> and, and Wilson says, the Panerai looks better anyway. Yes, my wife still thinks this is ugly, but uh, less ugly than the two-tone uh, Royal. And Talking Watches says, I just got a Royal in for my wife a couple weeks ago with the blue dial. That is awesome. Way to go, man. Way to go. And Roberto says, get an IWC Bruce 39 millimeter Spitfire. I'd love an IWC. That's another brand I'd love to try. Uh, I'm partial to the uh, Le Petit Prince chronograph. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And Nick is here. He says, I can't wait to see how you like the Chopic. So Nick, he works for uh, Exquisite Timepieces. I had him on a live stream not too long ago here. Let me switch over perspectives. And so he sent a Chopic and an Omega Railmaster. We're going to open those up here. You guys can see my dog and my three-year-old. Yeah, you got something. I'm doing a live stream right now, sweetie. Right here. Okay. Can you show me later when I'm done? Okay. Bear with me, guys. This is the dad life. You got a penny? Way to go. Can you go put it in your piggy bank? No, it's yours. Oh, it's mine. Thank you. I'll put it right here. I just found it. Okay. I'm doing a live stream. You got to leave now, okay? okay? I'll see you soon. Okay. You can take the dog with you. Yeah. Oh. What I have on my, my hand. Awesome. Okay. I got to I gotta unbox stuff now. Take, take Zoe with you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Do you need help with that? You got it. Can you close the door too? Okay. All right. Love you. And Mike says a penny toward my next watch. <laughs> We're going to put this in her, her piggy bank. So I'm not taking a penny from my daughter. All right, guys. Uh, let's, let's get to... Well, let's uh, let me show you this again. Where's where's this at? This is my latest purchase. For those of you tuning in, we've got about a hundred people in right now. Uh, I bought the. This is called the Panerai Pam zero zero one seven six. So this is the base. Um, I've got the box here. This came with everything: receipt, papers, hang tags. Um, let me just see if it's handy right now. <laughs> I, I want to tell you guys what year it came from. Oh, let me open this up. Thanks for being patient with me, guys. So what we have here, this is a classic Panerai wood presentation box. It's pretty nice. Not the best, not the worst. And I was wearing the VC today, but I, when I went to pick it up, I had to wear the new watch. So my, my watchmaker put the the Panerai protector over the VC and put it in the box. Um, anyways, let me, let me move that off. I was going to look for the papers. You know what? I'll do that later. I've got so many watches to unbox. Let me move this out of the way. All right, let's, let's get to, let's get to the next box here. So I've got, my knife that I put a BW logo on. Let's open this up. See what's inside. Roar of the tiger. LOL, your daughter was great. Thank you so much. She is awesome. She's so funny and cute and sweet. Um, I love being a dad. It's my favorite thing. Love being a father. Okay, so we've got a tag hoyer here. This one is from Saltzman's Watches. They're the authorized dealer I work with for tag hoyer in Newport, Rhode Island. And let me show you guys this. Oh my goodness, this is sick. So, and I've got so many things going on. Please bear with me as we as we switch perspectives here. This is a Carrera chronograph, lovely green dial. Um, this, of course, has the hoyer. Oh, one movement. So this is an in-house movement. This is a column wheel movement. Let's see if we can get the rotor to spin around. This thing spins around like crazy. It's kind of like the Valjou. Uh, it's unidirectionally winding. You guys can see the column wheel off to the side here. It's blackened out. That is awesome to see. And yeah, dude, this is pretty dang awesome. Um, 
Oh, that green really pops, doesn't it? Let's make sure we've got a little bit of juice and then let me actuate the function pushers here real quick. Okay, so let's get it going. Yeah, that is nice action. Oh, we don't have enough juice. It felt like nice action. It felt like really nice action. So let's make sure we've got enough juice. Okay, let's see if that does the trick. No. You know what? <clears throat> we wind this a little bit more. I'm sure it's not a broken... <laughs> it's not a broken watch. So I probably got a good 30 turns, at least full rotations of the crown. Let's ha see how we go here. So let's actuate the chronograph. There we go. You guys can see that, that going. There was no jump that sometimes you get with cam lever actuation of a chronograph. Nice and clicky. That column wheel. Ooh, that feels good. Really good. So there's the tag Hoyer. Let me kind of set this box off to the side and uh, let, let me interact with you guys in the comment section here real quick. Um, we have someone from the British Virgin Islands tuning in. Bruce says uh, the tag is definitely moving in the right direction. And I, I would definitely would agree with that. Scott says, I'm late to the party. Look forward to upcoming reviews of some of these. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. And Steve recently picked up a Seamaster 300 white dial. So you got the most popular one, the hard to get one. You're in love with it. That is so great. I'm, I'm pumped for you, man. Mark says Panerai is the way. Is this like a Mandalorian? Oh, because you see the Mandalorian short. This is the way. Yeah, that's right, man. Pan, uh, Panerai, this is the way. <laughs> it's good to see some of you guys. And About Time is in, is in the chat too. I'm going to be streaming on as a guest on their channel on Saturday. So two days from now at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, I'll be a guest on About Time's live stream. So uh, let's continue with the unboxings here and let's go to the next package. This one is a micro brand and this is one that I'm gonna be giving away within my Discord group. And this is a Serge Panchenko who is a knife maker, but he's, he did his first watch. And so this is called the Model 1. I reviewed it, I don't know, maybe six months ago. And after I did the review, he's like, do you want a production model? I said, yeah, I'd love one. So this is the production model. Again, I'm going to be giving away within the Discord group. And it's got actually a pretty cool wood box that he made because I I follow him on, on Instagram. And so he was posting all these uh, videos on uh, on making his, his shipping boxes and stuff. And let me actually do this in front of the, the screen here. Let me show you guys what I got. I had him do the blue dial with the blue titanium bezel bolted on there. It comes with the tool needed to swap out um, the links. This is such a toolish watch, and it's heavy, and it's it's fun. I I like the square shape. I like the fact that it's all stone washed, so I don't have to worry if I was going to wear this as a beater watch. I don't have to worry about scratching it or anything. I love the weight and heft, and I love how that titanium works really well with this kind of baby blue dial uh, contrast nicely with the orange minute hand. So this is really nice. And uh, again, I'll be, I know some of you guys in the, in the chat right now are part of the Discord group, and one of you is going to win this watch. I'll just do a random giveaway. Uh, so that is, that's pretty exciting. All right, let's keep moving here. We've got we've, we've still got a few more boxes to get through. I'm not sure what this one is. I took off all the labels, uh, any kind of personal contact information. I made sure that that was not shown on the outside. Not that I don't trust you guys, but let's see what's inside here. Oh. Um, someone sent me some pumpkin pie caramels, champagne bears, and sugar cookies. 
I have no idea who sent this. Was this you, Rob, if you're still here in the chat? Did you send me this? <laughs> I got I got random um, treats from, from someone. I, I think it was Robert. I, I'm going to guess it was Robert, but I, I don't know. All right, let's get to the topic in the Omega. It's a big one. Nick wanted to send the presentation box because I'm guessing it's really awesome. You know, and it better be if you're going to spend $20,000 on on a watch, you better get a pretty awesome box. <laughs> Who said that? William says, I wouldn't wear that watch to a garage sale. Come on, man. Show it some love. Rob says, nope, it wasn't him. I don't know who it was. I do not know who that was. But thank you, whoever uh, sent me some, some candies. It's pretty cool. All right. Let's start with the watch that's in here. Secret admirer. Yeah, it may, it may be. I don't know. I, but I don't give my home address out, and I'm pretty sure that came to my home. Oh, sweet. All right, guys, let me pull this in front of the camera. We have the Omega Railmaster silver dial on the brushed bracelet. This thing, I've got a crush on this watch. And I know Nick said that this one came from the pre-owned inventory, but it pretty much looks new to me at first glance here. It looks like it's in great. Okay, the bracelet has... A couple hairline wear marks. So yeah, I guess it is pre-owned, but um, let me see if I can easily take off this tape and show you guys this dial to a nicer level of, um, of detail. I don't want to sit here fumbling around. I know you guys are tuning in to, to look at some cool watches and interact with me in the chat. So you know what? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll do that later, but let me give you guys another look. This Railmaster... It's all brushed. There is no pop and polish of polished center links or a bezel or the lyre style lugs like you would find on an Aquaterra. And it kind of has an almost quasi sandwich dial because uh, of the way these triangular or pizza shaped markers are printed on. It's kind of a flat application. And you know what? I like the warm tone. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of old radium super luminova, but I think it works on this all silver tone. Even the dial is brushed all brushed sporty watch this thing is pretty awesome and let's do a side by side with the luminor there the panerai base and then here it is next to that beautiful tag hoyer carrera chronograph with the in-house movement yeah this is a beauty i'm gonna oh, it's a good thing i just bought this because i'm sure i, I would have wanted to buy this <laughs> Railmaster from exquisite from nick so I'm, I'm a little bit tapped out on funds right now. I mean, I've got some, but not enough for an Omega. All right, so this is the topic. I've just pulled it up. Okay, let's see what we got here. Bear with me, guys. Okay, let's move the big box off. This is what the box looks like. It's a blue outer box with Chopic Genev on the top. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you sent the box, Nick, because this looks really nice. Let me pull it out of, out of this. It's substantial and heavy. In fact, this is heavier than my Vacheron Constantin overseas wood presentation box. I'm not sure why this is so dang heavy, but it is very heavy. Okay, let's see. Oh, <laughs> so check this out. I'm like, how do I open this box? It, you slide it, slide this part off. We've got too many boxes here, guys. Too many boxes. So it comes with the rubber. Uh, there's little slots with tools. Here's the butterfly. There's a space for everything, the papers. That's pretty neat, actually. I, I, I do like that. And then... This part comes off, and this is the watch. So this is the Chopic 
forgive me if I butcher this. I think it's the Antar Antarctic. Antarctic. <laughs> right. Bruce just calls this Thursday. It is a Thursday. I'll tell you that. It's an awesome Thursday, though, for sure. New watch day. Bunch of great watches in to review over the next week or two. And let me pull this up in front of the screen view. So, I mean, obviously, this is more of a sport piece that has an integrated bracelet. It's thin. You know, this is not the blue dial, kind of the blue dial craze of the 5711, the 15202, the overseas that I own. This this dial is, is gorgeous, though. And take a look at the side profile, nice and thin and trim. The bracelet has this lovely taper. Uh, I would assume this is all hand finished. This is really nicely finished, very sharp. But uh, here's where it gets super exciting. This is their first in-house movement. And you guys can see it's a micro rotor made out of recycled gold. So that, that what that is is like the gold that comes from cell phones and, and electronics that's um, – you know, melted down at, at small quantities to make larger quantities. You guys can see a free sprung balance, skeletonized uh, ratchet wheel, gear train. That looks dang good. My goodness, that does look very, very nice. And let's see this. Let's see if it's a screw. Yeah, it is a screw down crown. I believe it's 120 meters of water resistance. So just make sure I've unthreaded it properly. Wind it. The winding action is a little stiffer than I was anticipating. There's more resistance than I thought, but it's still smooth. Nice mechanical feel to it. Date at the six o'clock position. And I, I, I like this. I do like this. Now, the, the trouble that this brand I think will run into is I'm it's at a tough price point because technically and I pull the overseas out, but it's in the Panerai box over there. <laughs> over there, it, it's at a tough price because there's some stiff competition. You can buy the overseas from you know one of the holy trinity of watch brands, and so I think it will take a true enthusiast to want to spend the retail price for a Chopic that nobody really will recognize. Now I know that not a lot of people will recognize the name Vacheron. Or uh, or even Paddock, right? I'm talking about the layperson that maybe knows Rolex, maybe knows Breitling, maybe even knows Hublot, <laughs> Tag Heuer. You know, the, the topic you'll only recognize if you're a real watch enthusiast. And so I, I think these have been selling well from what I hear, but it's in a tough price category, you know, with some really stiff competition from some brands that, um, you know, carry a lot of weight. But um, anyways, Nick says here, Bruce, just a heads up, that watch is 100% sold out now, but the pass Passage de Drake dials are non-limited, blue, silver, and black dials. Okay, so yeah, 100% sold out, but there are a couple non-limited versions in blue, black, and silver. Very cool. Thanks for letting me know that. <laughs> Werner says, uh, sell the VC, buy this one. Hank says, snazzy. What's the price? I believe it's like around $19,000. I, I should have done my homework before I uh, put it on, but it was, I think it's close to $19,000. That is a rare watch. The logo looks like an Alien Press special. What, what does that even mean? You're just talking about the branding? Or are you talking about the, the logo and the crown? I don't know. Okay, uh, thank you. Tourista says the price is set at 18000 Swiss francs or about 19,000, uh, just a hair under $19,000. So it's a little bit less expensive than the overseas, which I think is over 20 now. I, I bought mine right before the price increase. Mine was 196. Um, so anyways, this is going to be a little bit more affordable than the overseas, but certainly a pretty penny. Oh, but says Chopic is awesome. I agree. Um, indie guys like me will buy it. I bought the Streamliner over the more popular brands. So you bought a Moser over, uh, you know, AP, Bacheron. That's that's pretty cool. I appreciate that. And Blue Shirt says, please give Bruce this live stream a thumbs up before you leave. Ah, thank you. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. 
All right, guys, let's con let's continue with our unboxing here. We've got a couple more boxes to go. I don't want to take too much of your time. And if you got to pop out, that's totally fine. Um, understand this is a this is a Thursday. So regular Thursday, regular Thursday. Okay, I'm trying to put this chopic box back together and then get it off of the main desk area. This is a cool, this is a really cool box, no doubt. Put it safe on that side. All right, guys, we got three more boxes to go here. Three more boxes. Dirk says, joining late. Sorry, a Panerai. Yeah, Dirk, I bought a uh, Panerai locally here. It's a, it's a discontinued older ETA version. So um, let me show you guys this. Nice card from Brent L. Miller. Bruce, looking forward to hearing what you think. Thanks, Brad. Brad is a viewer who I've conversed with a few times on email, and then he decided to get into the industry, and now he works at Brent L. Miller an authorized dealer, brick and mortar authorized dealer in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And he's like, Hey, I, I know you work with certain authorized dealers on watches, but uh, do you want to collaborate sometime? And I said, yeah, I don't have an authorized dealer that lends in tutor. So we've got a tutor. Uh, we've got a tutor. I'm excited about this because tutor is awesome. And I requested this lovely Pelagos titanium black dial I know the blue dial is pretty popular, but I'm partial to the black. This is one of the best tool watches that you can buy. You know, I know it's kind of crass to say a $4,000 watch is a tool watch or a beater watch, but I know a lot of guys that buy this and they wear it everywhere. They do everything in it. And the grade two titanium, it gets all scratched up. And you know what? I think it actually looks kind of awesome when it's all worn in. And let me see if you guys can hear this, but the bezel action... Here, I'll pull it up to the microphone. So nice. So precise. Oh, man, that's awesome. And you guys know the loom is fantastic, BGW9, and it's deep filled within the bezel. And this has probably, I don't know, probably the nicest clasp out there. Ceramic ball bearing detent, and then you've got a dive extension, and then you also have... Um, different positions and then you you can put it to the spring loaded setting right here so just super comfortable and really well made and this one has the in-house movement um, I've toyed with getting an ETA personally because it's just a hair thinner than this one I mean this is kind of a thick watch can't remember exactly I think it's close to 15 in overall height but very capable very toolish and I respect it quite a bit so we're going to be doing a full review on that as well. And again, that one came from Brent L. Miller for those of you in in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Wilson says the bracelet is awesome. It, it totally is. It totally is. And young XLNC scratches are just lines in the daily diary. Our watches become through wear, use, and experiences. Uh, Brad is a great guy. I've chatted with him a few times looking to buy Black Bay 58 or the new Speedy off him this year. Awesome. That's a, <laughs> you can't go wrong with either one of those watches. The new Speedy is one that I really looking forward to as well. And Werner says, I have had the Plagas for three years. We'll never fall out of love. Choose it twice over a sub. That's a nice endorsement right there. Definitely. Do you have a sub as well? I, I don't know if you, if you have one, uh, Werner, but kind of curious all right guys we're almost to the end of this mega unboxing day this one came from my friend homer it's a gift homer's one of the nicest dudes i've ever met It looks like a watch box, but it's not. It is an ornament from Breitling. So uh, let me pull it open. I'm excited to see what it looks like. And you know what? I'll throw it on the Christmas tree because I still have the Christmas tree up. 
So it's kind of hokey. Uh, you've got this fighter jet with Santa Claus on top, and he's wearing goggles. He's not wearing a watch, and you've got the Breitling logo on the fin of the the jet. So this will go on. <laughs> this will go on the Christmas tree. And th Homer, thank you very much. That's really kind of you. And this this box is legit, man. For a Christmas ornament, that is a legit box. Wilson says, put it on the tree now. Uh, maybe I will at the end. All right, we've got one more here, guys. We've got one more. Let's do this thing. And then maybe we can answer a few questions. Oh. Packing peanuts. Okay, so this one is a micro brand called Dorenzo, and this is their upcoming Mondial, the, what is it, DRZ04. So this, this one looks pretty good. Um, let me pull it out in front. Oh, there's two of them. I thought he was only going to send one. I've got two of them here. All right, this is what we've got. This is an upcoming release from Dorenzo. You guys can see it's an integrated bracelet style with a dial that's really interesting because there's no traditional chapter ring. It kind of has a curve to it. So it, it's got a really interesting look to it. Uh, circular markers, Fume dial on the blue. I asked for the white. Um, I don't know. I just thought the white would look really good. But this is, this is a watch that will be available for pre-order in March, I think, and then delivery is early summer. But this is going to be his, his next design and you know what it, it looks nice so let me focus on one real quick let me show you the case back you guys can see a salita sw 200-1 so a nice swiss made movement uh, we've got a butterfly style clasp with some micro perlage work done there in the center portion we've got a signature the brand signature on one side uh not signed on the other side of the butterfly and i'll have to get the the dimensions out but it, it's nice in thin. And I think this is going to wear really nicely. And the bracelet has a bit of flex and play to it. So it's not going to be, you know, Rolex rigid. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, this looks, this looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? I think the retail price is going to be around $600 and there will be a meteorite dial version that will be a little bit more expensive, but I'm looking forward to doing review on all of that stuff. Um, all that stuff. Man, we've got some fun things. We've got the Omega. We've got the Chopic. We've got the Tudor, the, the Tag Hoyer off screen. We have the lovely Model 1. <laughs> what a day. And then again, guys, this is my latest pickup that I bought today. Uh, the, the base titanium Luminor Batterini case sandwich dial. As basic as it comes, right? Just hours and minutes. No minute indexing. No seconds hand. Very simple and with the ETA movement, uh, very nicely modified, decorated. We've got a swan neck regulator there. Much different looking than your standard pocket watch um, movement. And then the beat frequency went up from 18,000 to 21.6, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to put this on wrist and tell you guys what I'm planning on doing here. And let me kind of put myself back in prominence. What I'm planning on doing with this, I think this this strap, I don't necessarily have a problem with the good leather on a Panerai, but on a, I don't know. This one, it just doesn't work in my opinion. So I'm going to be getting a rubber for this uh, factory rubber from Panerai. And I think I want to go with the kind of olive or drab green. I think that would mesh really nicely with the tone of the titanium on this Panerai. So um, I'm going to be doing that here real soon. We'll be doing a full review on it as well. And Dirk calls dibs on the Pam. Man, you might have to be waiting a while. I Obviously, I just got this today. I'm in the honeymoon, but I've been wanting a good Panerai for a while. And um, 
I've looked at a few different models. I'm not necessarily opposed to a modern in-house version, but I wanted to get a good, you know, ETA days example. And those are just getting to be harder to find these days. And I worry about fakes and I, you know, I don't want an all jacked up watch buying a pre-owned watch that's over 10 years old. And I think I really lucked out with this one because it's in fantastic condition, running really well. I saw it on the time grapher. I have all the box and papers, uh, original owner that, that, that sold it. So, um, yeah, it's pretty great. Sam Ray says, maybe look at rubber B straps. Um, I have I have a different opinion. I know they're probably rubber B is probably the best quality out of all the luxury straps out there, third third party strap makers out there. But you know what? When I when I have a brand, I want the OEM, and I know Panerai makes fantastic straps across the board. So to me, it would be most enjoyable on a Panerai strap as opposed to a rubber B. And Steve says the OD green is awesome. It's my favorite color. <laughs> and, and Derek says, dibs, dibs, dibs. Yeah, so maybe you're excited too because these are hard to find in good condition, um, you know, the, the classic. So yeah, you, you got first dibs, Dirk, if if I do it. And Rob says, paying for dibs, LOL. Yeah, and, and young XLNC thinks that's funny too. So guys, do you have any questions for me? Anything you want to talk about? Let me put this on. I'll answer a few uh, comments and questions if you have something you'd like to talk about. Um, maybe in regards to one of the watches in front of the camera or something you would like to see on the channel soon. And I will say, um, I posted this on Instagram today, but I, I got a really nice email from Ocean of the uh, Timeless Watch channel. Who, who just reached out and said, hey, thanks for the kind words on your last live stream. I appreciate that because I complimented his Panerai video. Because again, guys, I've been you know looking into Panerai and he, he's made the best Panerai video on the internet by far. And so he, he reached out and just said, thank you. And I said, oh no, you're welcome. It was a lovely video. And I'd love to chat with you sometime if, if you're open to that. So he's going to be joining me as a guest this Sunday. It will be 4 p.m. Eastern. It will be 10 p.m. Central European time. But I'm so excited to, to talk to him a little bit and, uh, you know, talk watches and various topics and stuff. So, okay, let's, let's answer a few questions. Let me stop rambling here. Um, Wilson says, besides the Panerai, what's the unboxed watch you like most at first glance? Oh, um, that's a good question. Uh, the easy answer would be the Chopic because it, it's just the highest quality. I mean, the movement looks, and let me change the perspective. The movement looks like a million bucks. A true micro rotor with some precious metal, integrated bracelet, lovely dial details, case details, thin. I'd say this is the most exciting you know, but it should be, it's the most expensive. It should be the most exciting watch on the table. But, uh, I think close second, well, no, I was going to say the Pelagos, but man, I can't quit Omega. O Omega is so good. And this is a more divisive watch, right? Because I don't know, it's got the Fotina, it's all brushed. There's no polish anywhere. There's no date. There is no open case back. This, this comes with, you know, the closed engraved case back, but Man, I, I do enjoy good Omega. Omega has become my favorite brand. So I'd have to say Chopic, then Omega, and then Pelagos. And then it's a toss-up between the other watches. Um, Bruce, I came in late today. I could not see all the watches. No worries. No worries at all. Glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> there's watches in front of the camera. This is what I've unboxed, and this is my latest purchase. It's a luminar base and titanium. Kevin says, opinions on Longines watches. I think Longines, they, they do some really attractive retro inspired watches. I bought, um, what was it? The Avigation Big Eye Chronograph. And I think I spent like 1800 if I remember correctly. I think a retail price is a little over two, but you can get them for under two. And that might be one of the best purchases right around that price if you're going for value for money. It's got a, a modified value chronograph, column wheel, blue column wheel uh, movement there, great dial details. I like that one quite a bit. But I haven't had the best experience with Longines. I bought, um, let's see, my first one was the Railroad. But my problem was I bought at Gray Market and it, it was 
it was broken. And uh, so I returned it. And then I bought uh, a Hydro Conquest second generation, also from the gray market. This was like, you know, four or five years ago. And that thing was was broken too. So, I mean, I've just had terrible luck with the gray market. So that kind of turned me away. But I borrowed some nice Longines. I borrowed the Hydro Conquest from Exquisite, the latest generation. I think that one's a, a good purchase at its price. I don't think it's industry leading when it comes to, you know, bezel action or whatnot. But I do like Panera. Or Panera I'm still thinking about Panera. I do like Longines. I think their best work is their retro inspired stuff. And I love to see their tuxedo chronograph. I think that one looks really, really attractive. Um, That's dope says, I had a question. Well, what's your question? That's dope. Sorry, I, I have a hard time keeping up with the comments. Um, I, I don't see it. So ask it again and I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer it there. That's dope. Han says, plan B, sell everything and you mean everything and move to the wife's homeland, Rhodes. Okay. That must be a conversation you're having with somebody else. Do you have a favorite young hands max bill? No, I've, I've, I don't know. I don't have a problem with Bauhaus, but I've never seen a young hands that really grabbed me. That made me want to either spend my money or ask an authorized dealer to send me one. So I don't personally, but I do know it's, it's kind of a forum favorite. A lot of people like young hands. I've just never really uh, been into them personally. Dennis says, Plagos is a great watch. I've owned both the standard and the left-hand drive, but ultimately moved away from them. Underside of the lugs, too sharp and cut the heck out of my bony wrist. Ah, that's too bad. It's too bad here. But you're a Rangers fan. I see you're a Rangers fan. That's pretty cool. Will you do a Plagos Submariner comparison vid? Would you, would you guys like to see me do that? I mean, they're in such different price categories and one of them is so hard to get. One of them is, is pretty easy to get. I, I don't know. I think it would be helpful, but um, Rolex just seems to get so much flack from watch enthusiasts. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe I'll throw it in the review, just a few side-by-side -side shots. Um, but if you want a dedicated comparison, let me know. I, I might do it. We'll see. Rob says the tag looks nice. Did you get rid of all your G-Shocks? Patrick says, yes, I did. So uh, what was it? Early fall, late summer, I decided to really pare down and simplify and upgrade my watch collection because I had I had a lot of watches, some really great ones, and a lot of them weren't weren't being used to the degree that I would like. I just don't have the wrist time, and I'm not going to be a fool walking around with two watches on wrist at the same time. So I simplified, and I let go of some amazing watches, and a lot of you guys have given me crap for that because I let go of some pieces that it's not a smart idea to sell or to get rid of. I know Dirk got my Air King and my friend, um, um, I, I sold mostly to my friends who called dibs on my watches, but I let go of some awesome pieces. I let go of all my G-Shocks and I went down to three watches. I bought the overseas. I have my Hulk and I had my Speedmaster, and that's been my core really for about the past six months. And I've really enjoyed minimalism. It's been simple. All of my watches get worn. They're all heavy hitters. They're all a little bit different. And now I have a core collection of four because now the um, the Panerai has joined the fold. So I've got a titanium Panerai, a sapphire sandwich, which I will eventually upgrade to the latest um, Meta certified moon watch. And then, of course, I've got my, my grill piece, the Overseas and the Hulk. So um, I did get rid of all my G-Shocks, but I'm sure I'll get one again at some point. So <laughs> how long before someone starts rocking a third watch as an ankle watch? Oh, I hope I never see that. Uh, Dirk says the Air King is in good hands, not going anywhere. Yeah, you know what? That one, I'm sure when that's a $10,000 watch in a year or two, if it's discontinued, you're going to be glad you hung on to that. It's such a cool watch, and I'm glad you're enjoying it, Dirk. Wilson, can I call a general dibs on your watches? Man, you're too late to the game. Uh, Dirk already called dibs on the Panerai, but I just don't see selling enemy watches anytime soon. Maybe the Speedmaster when I upgrade. Um, Obud says, what do you think about the new Zenith El Primero Sport? I think it looks fun. I saw a picture of it. I shouldn't have seen it. Uh, a friend of mine showed me a picture that works at an authorized dealer. So I saw it before it was announced. And man, they're going hard off, off uh, after the Daytona crowd. And that's probably a smart move because so many people want a Daytona 
can't get one. And this is, you know, very respected chronograph. I think it looks aesthetically sharp. I think it will do well. And if Rolex was smart, they would release a Tudor Black Bay chronograph, reverse Panda, and, you know, pump it out and sell tons of them for 5,000 bucks because you know that that would sell thousands and thousands and thousands. Patrick says, don't you need a beater? You know what? I like wearing all my watches, even if they're luxury. So I wear my my sub all, you know, very frequently. I wore the VC earlier today. I wear a watch when I sleep. I'll probably wear the heck out of this Pam for the next little while. Um, so, I mean, if I ever do something like play basketball, I take my watch off. I don't think I, I really need a technically a beater watch. Um, Rod says, what do you think of the Grand Seiko sports collection? Um, are you just talking about, is there a specific collection or are you just talking about like their diver? Um, cause I reviewed the diver that Mark Goldberg lent in and it was really nice, but man, I, I was kind of disappointed in the dial. And if I had, you know, $5,000, I probably wouldn't be buying that diver. I'd be, I'd be reaching out to a different one, a different brand. Dr. Swag says, Bruce, I really like the minimalism idea. I think I will try that as well. Not selling my Pelagos though, or my Breitling. This will be tougher than I thought. Yeah, you know what? It was really hard because I, I let go of some pieces I never thought I would end up selling. Um, and from time to time, I miss them. Like I miss the Air King. I miss the GMT. Uh, I miss the Bling Master from, from Casio. But then I put on the VC or the Hulk. I don't miss the watches anymore. So, um, yeah. Uh, Theo says, is Tudor a beater? It just depends. Some people, some people um, wear it as a beater watch. Again, here's the Pelagos in front of the camera. And I know guys that wear this all the time and it's all scratched up and beat up and there's marks in the AR, you know, um, coating on the Sapphire crystal and the, the bracelet is, is kind of jacked up. But I think if you wanted to wear this as a beater, I'm not one to tell you what to do with your own money. I know there's the argument that it's kind of crass to use something that costs thousands of dollars as, as your beater watch, but I don't really see anything wrong with it. I, I say wear and enjoy your watches. Don't let them be safe queens. Kevin says, best entry Rolex for a first-time buyer. Um, well, I mean, that's a tough question. That's a tough question because it, I could recommend like a sub because the sub is so great. But the first-time buyer is not going to be able to get one from an authorized dealer. Generally, their first time walking into the store. I think your best shot is is probably a date just. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound exciting, or an oyster perpetual. I think you could get an oyster perpetual, and I would rather have an OP than a date just forty-one personally. So um, yeah, it just runs into that problem of availability for the first-time buyer. Brandon says there's no such thing as a beater over a grand. I get, I get that. But I mean, what if, what if that individual is used to wearing, you know, $10,000 watches? I mean, their least expensive watch is 10 grand. I know guys like that. Their beater watch could very well be a tutor, you know, in their eyes. I think it's all relative. Um, it, it all talks and you know, it's all perspective. Bobby Lugs says, Hey there, Bruce. Good evening. All good to see you. Bobby legs. Hope you're doing well. Cool shirt, bro. Thank you. Mandalorian. It's a good shirt. Good show. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Han says the, ex Oh, that's not what I was trying to get to. Where was it at? Okay. You guys are moving too fast for me. There it is. Explorer is good for a first time buyer. Also. I mean, the Explorer is just about the perfect size, 39 millimeter, nice and thin, simple and clean and organized. Great history. But again, it's hard to get. <laughs> it's hard to get. You walk into an authorized dealer and say, I want to buy an Explorer or a sub. And if that AD has never met you before and you come across as a tool, you're probably not going to get that watch um, realistically. Here's another, oh, here's another question. Did you sell your beautiful SBDX001? That is the Marine Master. And I did. I did. I um. Oh, I, I bought that thinking this is my daughter, my first daughter's birth year and month. I'll never sell this. I'll give this to her, you know, when she gets older. That's what I tell myself, right? Because I'm selfish and I just want to buy a watch and I, I, I'm justifying sentimentality by buying it. And then I realize your children rarely 
share the same passions as you do. And I'm sure she's not going to want, you know, when she turns 16 or something, she's not going to want a big old ugly fat Seiko to wear around. <laughs> She'd rather probably want something else that's more beneficial to her. And, you know, eventually I'm sure I will get her a watch if she's interested in watches. And uh, I'm sure when I die, I'll be giving my children watches. So they will have eventually something sentimental, but, um, yeah, I did sell it because really the, the idea of a sentimental heirloom piece, I used to think that was great. Now I don't think it's such a great idea. I think it's just an excuse for us to justify buying a watch for ourselves because we're selfish. And I'll say it, I'm selfish. I'm, I'm a watch knob. I, I, I love watches. So, and then, oops, I oh, mean, I can't click on the one, but let's answer this one anyway. Would you take a tag Octavia into a tub swimming? It does not have a screw down crown. Um, yeah, I probably would. I mean, I, I shower with watches. I go swimming with watches. I don't take watches into hot tubs. Um, I, I have taken watches to lakes and reservoirs to the ocean I think, you know, as long as it's fairly new and has good seals, I think you're fine. Obviously, you want a screw down crown just for the peace of mind of not having the crown pop open while it's being used in water. But, you know, if, if you feel like it's firm against the case, I don't think it's a huge deal. I think sometimes we're a little bit too safe with our watches. We baby them too much. Um, Theo says, I have a Hamilton khaki auto I'm saving for my son. Yeah. I mean, the idea, I, I, at one point I really liked the idea, but in the end, I just, I realized I was using it as an excuse to buy watches. And I think my children are going to have different interests in what can I do? What can I, what kind of meaningful gift can I give them in the future? I don't know what that's going to be yet. You know, they've got to develop and grow a little bit. Uh, I'm sure they'll get what my kids will eventually get watches, but um, I, I've just kind of changed my th way of thinking and uh, on on this, you know, sentimental, uh, pass down watches. Bobby leg says, Bruce, do you do a three watch collection of sin? Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Um, I, I did. I can't remember what they were off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. One of them was just an outrageous watch. You know, one of their, one of 75 precious metal dress pieces. And I don't remember the name of it. And then I think I picked the U 50, I can remember what I picked at this point. It's been a little while, but yeah, I did do that. I did do that. Um, your next Seiko. Oh, that's a good question. Maybe a tuna. I know Robert, Random Rob is going to be sending me a, a couple tunas, the latest one in blue, and then also the previous generation that he'd like my watchmaker to mod a sapphire crystal on. So um, I'm sure when I see it, I'll fall in love with the tuna again because it's such great design. It's a piece that I don't have to worry about, right? It, it's I don't have to wind it. If I if it sits in the watch box, you know that seven C four six quartz movement is going to be running for five years. Great loom. That one, the tuna is, is probably realistically the next Seiko, but I mean I don't have plans on purchasing one uh, in the near future. Maybe that changes, but we'll see. I, I like minimalism. Like I've got four watches. I don't want to get too big. I don't want to have too large of a collection. Um. Let's see. Uh, let's do one more question here. Your thoughts on the Omega Proplof steel. I think it's a dang cool watch. I have seen them in person. It's a big watch and it's, it's hard to wear. It's very difficult to wear. I mean, that crown, you think that the Panerai crown is, is big. <laughs> it's nothing compared to the Proplof and it's so heavy. Is it cool? It's dang cool. Is it practical as a daily wear piece? I don't necessarily think it is. I think it's just one of those fun ones to collect. And if you love it, why not buy one? I know they're pricey, uh, but they are really cool. I just don't think they're super practical. So I don't know, guys. Let, let's do another question. Let's do another couple questions here. We're almost at an hour. James says, I'm considering the black or blue OP36 and leaning toward black. I think black is classic, uh, very classic. The blue is probably going to be harder to get because it's so pretty and blue seems to be the craze. So... Um, black might be a better choice. Kevin says, I'm waiting for a Grand Seiko perpetual calendar. I mean, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think that the Grand Seiko is going to foray into some of those higher end complications. They certainly have the capability of doing stuff. And I, I, I know that they come out with concept watches that are really impressive, 
but they seem to save the really impressive stuff, uh, at least the production stuff for Creedor. So I don't know if we're ever going to get a Grand Seiko branded perpetual calendar. Gary says, isn't the VC overseas meant to do anything? Climb Everest. So why not wear it as a beater? Um, I don't know if it's meant to do anything. I mean, you get the leather, you get the rubber, you get the bracelet. It looks like a million bucks. I, I did a poll actually on, on the channel, on the community page where I said, what is your pick, you know, of the blue stainless steel sport pieces, the 5711 from Paddock, the 15202, the Royal Oak from Audemars Piguet or the overseas. And surprisingly, the Paddock and the overseas tied at like 34% a piece. And then uh, the AP was just a little bit behind, but it was interesting to me how close they were in overall votes. Uh, I thought that, you know, it would be different. I thought the overseas would be a massive underdog, but it, it seems to get a lot of love from the watch enthusiast community. And maybe it's because it's a little bit more available, a little bit more affordable than those other two, but um, yeah, why not wear it? I actually wore it on the rubber yesterday. I slept in it. I slept in my overseas. That kind of sounds weird to say, but uh, yeah, I wear mine all the time. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 bud says perpetuals are for Creedor. And I agree. Kevin says AP all day, baby. I'd love, I'd love an, an AP one day. So, and Kevin says, Bruce needs to review a big, ugly invite for April fool's day. You know, I've got, I've got a plan for April fool's day. I've got a plan. And it's going to be fun. I won't tell you guys what it is yet. Um, and Hassan says, do you buy insurance for your watches? Yes. If you have luxury watches, you need insurance for your luxury watches. Plain and simple. So, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that. Guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for being here today. If there's something specific you would like in the full reviews of all of these awesome watches, let me know. Happy to try to accommodate. There will be links in the description to all of the authorized dealers and my watchmaker and the micro brands so you can look at everything i featured here today thanks very much for being here i appreciate it you guys are awesome and i look forward to interacting with you on sunday when i'm live with the timeless uh timeless watch channel so uh, have a great evening and i'll catch you guys later